discovery from deep within the mountains of China. 12,000 year old ancient stone discs with an encrypted message from extraterrestrials called the Dropa. Some believe they tell an amazing story. There was an alien crash landing. Did aliens visit China thousands of years ago? Is there a connection to today's UFO sightings? I named it the Chinese Roswell. Is the Chinese government hiding evidence of extraterrestrial contact? The Drop of Stones is the strangest UFO story I've ever encountered. Join us as we uncover the truth behind China's Roswell. The story of the mysterious Dropa Discs begins deep within China's Bayan Karaula Mountains. There, a 1938 archaeological expedition led by Chai Pu Te reportedly arrived to study a series of interconnected caves. What they are said to have found was far more intriguing. In a cave uh, allegedly found a row, row upon row, or several rows of of what looked like graves. But these were no ordinary graves. Inside these graves were many skeletons buried. Skeletons with big heads, big and clumsy heads, and with fragile bones. And in addition on the walls, we are told that there were images uh, of these stick figures of presumably these beings, these short beings with the large heads, with images of the sun, moon, and stars. He also found 716 stone disks, one feet in diameter, and they were about one or one and a half centimeters thick. These have become known as the Dropa Stones. And these round stone disks had a black hole in the center. Some of them have a rectangular notch engraved in them, not cut out. Some of the notches were cut out, others were just engraved. And then they found a spiraling groove of closely written ancient characters like hieroglyphics radiating out from the center. It is told that uh, the expedition of Mr. Chipote brought a lot of these stone disks to Beijing because he had been in the Beijing Academy of Sciences. According to believers, the Dropa stones were filed away with other items from antiquity. Some 20 years later, one scientist became interested in deciphering the hieroglyphs on the stones. It must have been at the end of the 50s, 1958 or 1959, when a Professor Zum Um Nui came upon these discs again, and what he could decipher was a very weird story. It was on the stones that Sum Um Nui is said to have deciphered the name of the extraterrestrials. They call themselves the Dropa. The name of the Dropas was written down on those stone disks. And the story was as follows, that there was an alien crash landing in Western, what is now Western China, 12,000 years ago. Dr. Nui purportedly faced opposition when it came time to publish his findings. In 1960 or 61, Professor Tsum Nui published his reportings uh, from his deciphering of the hieroglyphs. And the title was something like Hieroglyphs, which are telling the story of spacecraft crash landed in the Bayan Karaula Mountains in central China. Most of his colleagues thought it's an absolute nonsense. And so Professor Zum Um Nui became very frustrated and not long after his publication, he emigrated to Japan. However, the harsh reaction from the academic community in China did not silence the Dropa Stone story. A handful of magazines published articles about Dr. Nui's work, keeping the remarkable story of the stones alive. The first magazine, which was 
publishing this story was the Russian Sputnik magazine. A Sputnik magazine has been in the early 60s a magazine reporting interesting items from behind the Iron Curtain. After the Sputnik article, researchers say that the story spread around the world. In 1962 or 63, the Belgian UFO investigator and then German publication, The Vegetarian Universe, they brought the same story again. Until the year 1974, these articles inside the magazines were the only informations we had. It has never been possible to go to China in those years and to ask if the story is true. But some ufologists, people who research and study possible alien visitation, claim that the Dropa tale was kept alive by oral tradition in the Bayan Kara Ula. There are some old myths in those uh, mountains which are telling the story of these small, tiny people crash landing from the sky. Some of the legends claim that the Dropa came from a star system called Sirius. The ancient story tells that their ancestors came from the star system of Sirius 12,000 years ago. Some of the earliest gods and goddesses who came to Earth, according to legend, from the star Sirius, for example, in, in ancient Egypt, you have the goddess Isis, the embodiment of the star Sirius. The pyramids of Egypt were built in alignment with the star Sirius. The theory that ancient gods were actually space aliens is common among ufologists. Author Matthew Hurley has studied the god as space alien idea for over a decade. Throughout history, looking at many cultures around the world, we often hear of beings coming down from the sky and we often read of imagery of UFOs. To primitive humans, the technologically advanced visitors could have easily been mistaken for gods. They would have arrived in their ancient spacecraft. They would have had an unusual appearance. They would have spoken with a lot of wisdom and knowledge. So primitive man would have been overwhelmed by these experiences and may well have fallen into the trap of worshiping them as gods. Today, we are left with only two verifiable photographs and a fantastic tale, supposedly written in alien hieroglyphs. In 1938, a Chinese archaeological expedition to the isolated Bayan Karaula Mountains allegedly made an amazing discovery. Inside a series of caves that have never been located again, they are said to have found oddly shaped skeletons and hundreds of mysterious stone disks, now known as dropa stones. Some say that they also discovered etchings of the sun, stars, and other celestial bodies carved on the cave walls. And you saw the planets of our solar systems and other stars, and some of them connected with lines made from points. Something like a star map. In the caves, they find uh, pea-sized dots connecting the planet Earth to a distant star system, pointing towards the origin of the visitors. Are the alleged star map etchings proof that aliens were in the Bayan Kara Ula 12,000 years ago? UFO researcher and author Matthew Hurley maintains that ancient art from all over the world may provide evidence that early man was contacted by extraterrestrials. When we look at the cultures around the world and they all talk of beings coming down from above in their creation myths, the fact that we have the depiction of UFOs in artworks going back through the epochs to me strongly suggests ET and UFO visitation throughout the centuries. The earliest examples cited by Hurley date to primitive cave art over 30,000 years old. Initially, I believe ancient man would have used a branch and maybe scraped patterns in the mud. But then eventually he got hold of minerals such as manganese oxide and ochre and was able to construct beautifully executed images on cave walls of which we're familiar today, such as hunting scenes and bison and so forth. 
Early man also drew pictures of the natural world, including the sky. Man would have been looking up at the sky. It would have provided a permanent backdrop to his day-to-day -day living as it does for us today. And he would have observed the passage of the stars and heavenly bodies as the days went on. Man's fascination with the heavens has remained a common theme in art throughout the centuries. But Hurley sees unexplainable objects in many works of art that he believes may be extraterrestrials. This example is from an area of France known as Perche Mill. We've got these curious geometric triangular shaped objects. Here's an example of a petroglyph from Val Camonica in Italy, dated to 10,000 BC. And we've got two beans which are holding strange implements and they have what appear to be helmets surrounding their heads. Interpretations from ufologists support that these images might be depictions of extraterrestrials, but even Hurley admits that other possibilities exist. I think we've got three possible explanations for these ancient artworks. They could well be real, and people were illustrating what they saw. They could well be fictional and were purely out of the individual's imagination. Or they could well be real beings, but maybe tribal leaders in some sort of ritual costume. But Hurley is unsure about the origins of the alleged Dropa stones. I think what we may be looking at in those two photographs are either hoaxes which were done for the story, or they may well be jade by discs. Jade by discs were created for the wealthy elite of China, and they were placed in their tombs to protect them from demons. The Dropa stones do resemble jade by discs. There's no getting away from that. In fact, the general design of the alleged Dropa stones, disc-shaped with a hole in the center, has appeared in Chinese art for centuries. Thousands, if not tens of thousands, of these discs have been recovered from sites all over China from many time periods. There's nothing particularly unique about finding a flat disc with a hole in the center. Although the shape of the Dropa stones appears to be common to antiquity, the hieroglyphs on them were said to be otherworldly, the script of an alien hand. They were like characters from other languages. Uh, Mr. Chipote uh, thought it must be something like hieroglyphs. But some researchers find the hieroglyph story hard to believe. So these are discs that are allegedly 12,000 years old that have writing on them, that this Chinese scientist translated. This is very problematic. I mean, first of all, this is an achievement greater than the, uh, the translation of the Rosetta Stone by Champollion in the 19th century. The Rosetta Stone was carved in 196 BC in Egypt and lists the good deeds of the pharaoh using three scripts, hieroglyphic, demotic, and Greek. Jean-Francois Champollion deciphered the scripts in 1822 after many years of study. His ability to read both Greek and Coptic helped him to figure out the writing on the Rosetta Stone. Some skeptics have noted the difficulty, if not impossibility, involved in deciphering scripts from unknown origins. He was able to decipher Egyptian hieroglyphics because there were two other languages that he, he knew. <laughs> so in this case, a Chinese scientist is able to decipher an allegedly pre-human language and tell a story. How would you be able to tell the difference between an alien hieroglyphic and an alien human civilization hieroglyphic? So I don't know what to make of this. There's nothing to make of it. It's just a story. But according to the Dropa legend, there was something extraordinary about the stones. That's why Russian scientists allegedly asked to examine them in the late 1960s. After testing the composition of the disks, the Russian scientists are said to have studied the general design of the Dropa stones. It was either 12 inches in diameter or 12 inches in circumference, possibly about like this, large or so, with a hole in the center where you could stick your finger through, and had emanating from the center going to the periphery, a spiral like a groove. To describe the Bayan Karaula stone disks, I can compare them with a modern long playing disk 
So, like phonograph LPs, the Russian scientists supposedly placed the discs on a turntable of sorts to play them. Suddenly, the oscillator showed an abrupt movement that looked like the stone discs had some electrical charge inside. The conclusion was that these stone discs must have been inside a very strong electrical field. Some ufologists allege that the electrically charged stones could have been used to send a vibrating message through space. Were the Dropa trying to phone home, like Steven Spielberg's marooned extraterrestrial in the 1982 movie E.T.? Why were the hieroglyphs written in a spiral pattern? The enigma of the stones persists. Peter Liu, a physicist at Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, has studied the phenomena of spirals in the natural world. Anytime you want to simultaneously move, say, from the center of the circle while that circle is rotating, you get a spiral. We see logarithmic spirals on both animals and plants. In the animal kingdom, perhaps the most famous example is the chambered nautilus. Hurricanes, tornadoes, or spiral arrangements of storms. Like the swirling pattern of hieroglyphs on the alleged dropa stones, spirals are a common motif throughout art history. In Ireland at Newgrange, the entrance stone is covered with spirals. In China, about 3000 BC, we have these wonderful painted pots with artistically drawn spirals that have been made with a brush and ink. At about the same time, the Egyptians introduced hieroglyphics. They picked a spiral for the hieroglyphic character for the number 100. Spirals are an extremely common iconographic motif. We see them in a wide distribution through space and through time. And there's no reason to assume that it meant the same thing to everyone who drew one. Dropa has all the elements of a great science fiction story. Crashed UFOs, mysterious missing skeletons, and stone disks that are said to hold otherworldly secrets. If the account is true, extraterrestrials landed in China 12,000 years ago. Those who believe call it China's Roswell. You can compare these two stories, the Roswell UFO crash in 1947 and the Chinese Roswell that probably happened 12,000 years ago. You have probably alien spacecraft that has crash landed in an area. You have bodies that look similar in both cases, you have little people with big, clumsy heads and very tiny bones, very tiny skeleton. And as well, the proof of those crash landings has disappeared. And then the story went on and on and on through all the magazines, books, the internet. The story and the way it was covered bear striking similarities to the alleged alien crash site at Roswell, New Mexico. The Roswell incident really begins in the late 1970s when a documentary film about Roswell and other UFOs called UFOs Are Real uh, was picked up by the National Enquirer. It is true that in 1978 uh, there were stories in the National Enquirer that um, discussed Roswell and that this was one of the major ways that the story got its rebirth. And then you saw articles and television films about it and more books and more books. Then that's when the eyewitnesses started to come out of the woodwork and tell their story. That's when the Roswell incident really starts. Some UFO researchers agree that coverage in the tabloids seriously diminishes the believability and credibility of both the Roswell and Tropa accounts. It's been a real hindrance and um, it's unfortunate. Aside from being nearly impossible to find, the Dropa magazine sources have proven equally problematic, but for a variety of reasons. We are told that the original source for this was the Soviet magazine known as Sputnik. There is a, a German publication, a Vegetarian Universe, from July of 1962. There is a, apparently also a Belgian UFO publication. But they also had a, an account of this in 1962. These were very sensationalistic magazines, sort of uh, equivalents of the Star or the Enquirer and things like this. And who in the uh, in vegetarian universe knew Chinese? The tabloid articles about Roswell and Dropa are just one of several similarities. For some, the parallels run much deeper. 
A government conspiracy. In the minds of ufologists, cover-up is another aspect that both Dropa and Roswell have in common. They often believe that the governments of the U.S. and China are hiding extraterrestrial technology and alien bodies. Moreover, they claim Chinese officials have tried to hide a race of human-alien hybrids. There are a lot of instances in which the Chinese government acts in such a way as to prevent itself from being embarrassed. It's not just government restriction that keeps tourists out of certain areas in western China. The land itself is vast, isolated, and often inhospitable. The Bayan Karaula is a mountain range in the Qinghai province in central China. It is as big as the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, with mountains ranging up until 20,000 feet. And in this area is only one major road crossing through. In the Bayan Karaula mountain range are people who have every day their fight against nature. People are primarily uh, herders. Um, they uh, raise a variety of different kinds of animals, horses, goats, uh, sheep. But there are those who believe this rustic setting holds a dark secret. A legendary village of dwarves. Hausdorf argues that a race of human-alien hybrids may live in a Chinese village called Weilong. Like Roswell, those who subscribe to the Dropa story think the Chinese government could be hiding extraterrestrials who crash-landed on Earth. But the difference to Roswell, New Mexico, is that in China, probably 12,000 years ago, some of them did survive. And the next question is, when there were survivors, could they still exist in our days? Not the survivors themselves, but their descendants, generations and generations after. Hausdorff says that the small statured residents of Wee Long may be the hybrid offspring of local humans and the marooned Dropa. There are press allegations that there were remarkably short people, apparently, that living in that part of China. The Chinese government alleges that what has led to their dwarfism is the uh, existence of contaminants in the environment. The theory was supported by a study conducted by the Chinese Academy of Science, which found toxins in the water supply. The results were widely published around the world. The environmental pollution is extreme in many, many parts of China. The water was adequately treated, and according to press accounts in 1997, no new cases of dwarfism have been reported since. Could the little people of Wee Long have inspired the entire Dropa story? The mystery gets even more intriguing with the discovery of a journal written under the name of Dr. Carol Robin Evans, a British explorer. In 1978, author David Agamon posthumously published The Travel Diary of Robin Evans as a book titled Sun Gods in Exile. And this book described a journey to the, the Dropa region uh, that Evans had allegedly made where he encountered these dwarf-like people who said to him that they had ancestors who came from the stars. In 1947, English scientist Dr. Carl Robin Evans goes into the, the border of Tibet and China at the actual site and he studies the local language of the current Zopa people. Actually, the book Sun Gods in Exile reads like a true story and it's very thrilling. It's about those people coming through uh, space with a spacecraft and crash landed here on Earth. It turns out that there's there's no evidence that there was a Dr. Carol Robin Evans. No one can find this person or confirm that this person existed. David Agamon does exist or did exist and um, uh, from what I understand claimed that in later years that this was his own hoax or that there, he made up the name Dr. Carol Robin Evans. 
In the April 1998 edition of the popular British magazine Fortean Times, David Agamon did indeed admit that Sun Gods in Exile was a work of fiction. This book is a complete hoax. And in later years, David Agamon told the whole world, yes, this book is a hoax. Still, believers remain undaunted. I'm convinced there's a truth behind the stone disc story, but I know the book, Sun Gods in Exile, it is a hoax. Yet, like Roswell, the Dropa story continues to grow with time, and new evidence may have been discovered. Some say that mysterious Dropa stones supposedly found in the Chinese mountains were made by extraterrestrials who crash-landed on Earth 12,000 years ago. UFO researcher David Serrata believes that an astonishing video shot by the NASA space shuttle in 1996 shows mysterious objects shaped like dropa stones floating in space. Serrata thinks they are extraterrestrial spaceships that he calls NASA UFOs. There's a stunning resemblance to these dropa stones and the NASA UFOs. And this stone disc with a round hole in the center a rectangular notch cut out of the side and a spiraling groove of ancient written characters which was identical to what we were seeing on the NASA tapes. This infrared footage, part of NASA's enormous catalog of space imagery available to the public for review, was shot from the Space Shuttle Columbia, mission STS-75. Dr. Stephen Walton, director of the Donald E. Bianchi Planetarium and astronomy professor at California State University, Northridge, remembers the mission. On this particular mission, there was an idea of being able to generate electricity by unwheeling a 12-mile long spool of wire downward from the space shuttle. But unfortunately, the wire broke, and the rod that you can see is the broken end of the wire. The objects appear to travel past the downed wire. This movement has convinced Serrata that they must be UFOs. These things were all moving at different velocities. They must have internal energy in them to be going different velocities. Walton has a different opinion. If you look at the times at which the debris seems to make sudden motions, you find out that those sudden motions occur at the same time as the space shuttle firing its thrusters. Although neither is certain about the strange pulsing spiral seen on the objects, each has a very different theory of what it could be. When I freeze frame the, the pulse, you actually see a spiraling wave radiating out from the center. When we get closer to the objects and we zoom in on them, we can see them strobing with these very curious energy waves. I don't think that the flashing has anything to do with electricity. It looks to me like it's a purely optical effect. In Dr. Walton's view, the objects in question are nothing more than optical illusions caused by the space shuttle's video camera. What you're seeing is probably a piece of debris tumbling in the sunlight and flashing on and off. That flashing on and off of this object interacts with the 30 frames per second that a video camera takes. A simple experiment by Walton may demonstrate this phenomenon. What I've got in my hand is a white plastic lid from a spray can. You can see that. And if we show that white object to the camera and then make the camera go very far out of focus, you will see that the unfocused image of this white object looks very much like a sort of donut-shaped object, kind of a spherical edge with a hole in the middle. But some true believers are not convinced. When you consider the hole in the center, the rectangular notch, and the spiraling wave, all identical when you look at them side by side to the NASA STS-75 UFO in 1996. You've got to ask yourself a lot of questions. If someone is going to convince me that extraterrestrials are visiting the Earth, a few unidentifiable points of light on a video are not particularly persuasive. Like Roswell, some ufologists see the STS-75 footage as more evidence of a U.S. government conspiracy to hide extraterrestrials. 
But conspiracy goes beyond borders. Could the communist government in China have suppressed an even more shocking truth? Just like the physical evidence that is said to have disappeared from the ranch in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947, the physical evidence relating to the Dropa Stones has seemingly disappeared. I've never heard that the Russian scientists gave back those Bayan Karaula stone disks to the Chinese. Very few people after this know what happened to some artifacts. Until perhaps 1974, when an Austrian engineer familiar with the Dropa story claimed to have made an amazing discovery in China. An Austrian engineer, uh, a certain Mr. Wegerer, came upon a small museum in Xi'an and he suddenly saw those stone disks exposed there. So he asked the curator of the museum, a lady, uh, what's about these stone disks? Oh, these stone disks are just cultural relics. Mr. Wegerer took photographs with a Polaroid camera. Some see Ernst Wegerer's photos as important physical evidence of the Dropa story. It is apparently a real photograph that does show discs, yes, but uh, they don't show any grooves. They don't show anything that you can identify as, as the Dropa discs. The only evidence we're left with is a series of these Polaroid photographs. So the question is, is this purely a hoax or is there something to it? Hausdorff claims to have spoken directly with the late Ernst Wegerer and was given the now famous Dropa Stone photographs. Because of the political climate in China at the time, Hausdorff was not allowed to visit the country until 1994. I came upon this Banpyo Museum and I could speak with a curator. I showed him the photographs. First he looked around himself and then he told me, oh, I've heard just a few days after this Austrian engineer was here in this museum. Both the former curator and stone discs on exposure here. They disappeared. No one knows up to know where they have vanished to. The supposed disappearance of the stones has played into the conspiracy theories that now shroud the Dropa stones. Like the Roswell incident decades before, a handful of photographs remain. I think they are doing a cover-up Imagine the story. It's about uh, some alien people uh, who experienced something like 1947 happened in Roswell, New Mexico. When you don't have physical evidence, you have to give some explanation for why you think your story is true, even though you can't prove it. One of the things that people do in that case is construct conspiracy theories. Consensus seems impossible concerning both Roswell and the Dropa incident. Secrecy may be a common denominator. What government in this world would admit the reality of such an uncanny story? And that's the reason why I think that the Chinese government is hiding those Dropa disks. This is utter nonsense. Whenever a spectacular scientific discovery or technological invention uh, is made, people don't go crazy, society doesn't fall apart. Researchers claim that they've had trouble locating key people and physical evidence to support the Dropa tale. You can't find any people or any bits of evidence. You can't find the paper that Sum Hung Nui supposedly wrote in 1962. This has never been found by anybody. Where is it? Um, the disks themselves are nowhere to be found. And if as is claimed in the documents, uh, there were actual bones of, of these people excavated by a Chinese archaeological team. Where are the bones? The difficulty of, of believing the story itself is primarily because of the inability of anyone to track any of these sources. Hausdorff claims in his book, The Chinese Roswell, that the Dropa Stones, along with key evidence, were lost or destroyed during the decade of upheaval known as the Chinese Cultural Revolution. In the 1960s, the violent cultural revolution swept China. Having slipped in the ranks of the Communist Party, Chairman Mao Zedong created the revolution to regain power of the country. 
Mao. He couldn't do it through the Communist Party. So he mobilized the youth. He created an extra party apparatus in the Red Guards to bombard the party members and to get his own forces to replace those folks. And to a large extent, that was really what the Cultural Revolution was about. The Red Guard lashed out at all aspects of traditional Chinese society. Here's a piece of the old feudal society. Ta -da 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 -da. Destroy it, bring it, destroy the statue, tear down the image of a god that uh, people used to believe in, or a saint, or something like that, in the, the belief that these things were holding China back. And a lot of really great stuff was destroyed as a result. Artwork, uh, religious images, historical texts and things that are quite clearly irreplaceable and uh, an enormous loss to the culture and tradition of, of the Chinese people. On September 9, 1976, Chairman Mao died. The Chinese Cultural Revolution ended shortly after. Could the Dropa Stones have been destroyed at the hands of Mao's Red Guard? Or did a courageous art lover stash the stones to prevent their destruction? We may never know for certain. The past is blurred behind a bamboo curtain, truth long buried in the chaos of revolution. It's difficult to tell fact from fiction, reality from fantasy. For many of these people, the facts are irrelevant. That the belief in alien visitation is a matter of faith. No amount of contrary evidence is going to modify their beliefs because the facts don't matter. In the years following the Cultural Revolution, China struggled to regain some sense of normalcy. The main focus of life was no longer revolution. The borders opened and information poured in from the West, including the UFO craze that was sweeping America after close encounters of the third kind in 1977 and the publication of several books on Roswell. During the times of Mao Zedong, where they were communists, they were not allowed to get information about this. The communist ideology says all things come from Earth, such things as UFOs or alien people do not exist. But it didn't take long for the Chinese to catch on. By the late 1970s, people began to talk about and report UFO sightings. There appear to have been a fair amount of UFO sightings in China prior to the 1970s, but these were not really reported during the Mao years. After his death, around 1979 and 78, in fact, you start getting a degree of openness within China regarding of this topic. And there are a number of Chinese researchers looking into this phenomenon and then, as you would expect, dredging up stories from a lot of people who would say things like, oh, let me tell you what I saw five years ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Today, there are more UFO sightings over China than anywhere else in the world. There have been a variety of reported sightings in China of UFOs. Are they genuine visitations by UFOs? I don't know, but they certainly have been witnessed by large numbers of people. You have to bear in mind that China's got over a billion people. So when you have two or three or a couple of thousand members of a UFO organization, that's not necessarily a huge amount. But there is uh, a core of very good, serious-minded people in China with true academic credentials who take this topic quite seriously. I think that's significant. Unlike in the U.S., UFO sightings in China are not only reported in tabloids, but in conventional newspapers as well. According to press accounts, modern China has the world's biggest network of UFO clubs, the China UFO Research Organization, and a monthly UFO magazine that sells 400,000 copies. Hobbyists and academics meet regularly to watch the skies and discuss UFO news. There are, in fact, UFO clubs now beginning to spring up 
in and around China. Perhaps uh, now UFOs are more interested in China and there are more of them going there. <laughs> the reason that UFO clubs are more popular in China is they now are free to think what they want and they now are very interested in UFOs and related items. Which brings us back to the question, is Dropa China's Roswell? I see them as absolutely totally different. I see Dropa as uh, most likely hoax, almost certainly hoax, let us say. And I see Roswell as something that has not yet been explained officially by the United States Air Force or government. I think people call Dropa the Chinese Roswell because it's sexy and gets better ratings and attention to people because Roswell's already known. Otherwise, it's a total nonsense, mythical story. Just like Roswell, abductions, small beings with oversized heads, spaceships, hybrid children, and a government intent on hiding them, China is quickly creating its own UFO mythology. But if the accounts are true, their extraterrestrial heritage may go back many centuries, before the communists, before the cultural revolution, and even before the cave art. Back to the isolated mountains, where some believe that a peaceful race called the Dropa crash-landed and created stone disks to preserve their story for posterity. I think for some people, their own paradigm isn't wide enough to accept the idea that they may be looking at possible extraterrestrials. It would cause a revolution in sciences, because this would be the proof that there has been alien people from the stars crash landing here. But the lack of physical evidence sharply divides skeptics and believers. The only evidence we're left with is a series of these Polaroid photographs. So the question is, is this purely a hoax or is there something to it? That the people involved in the Dropa story, these Chinese scientists and, and other journalists who apparently wrote about it and so forth, are not to be found in any other context at all. No one knows who these people are. There's just no evidence that they actually even existed. First of all, there's no stones. There's no stones with grooves. There's no stones with grooves with hieroglyphics. My attitude toward the Dropa stones, get a life. Still others stand firm. Well, I myself, I'm convinced there's a truth behind the stone disc story. I'm convinced that most of the 716 stone discs are still in those caves. And maybe by chance it one day happens that another man can step in this area again and find these caves. And this would be a very thrilling thing. If it would be possible to find these stone discs again, it would rise the whole story out of the fox of obscurity again. Mm -hmm.